Hi, welcome to this lecture on the risk of fetal death, current concepts of best gestational age for delivery. This article was published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology in March 2013. We would first talk to you about what this paper is about and then go on to critique the article. This study was conducted because previous studies on the best gestational age for delivery had only looked at problems arising from prematurity and based it on neonatal mortalities. The best gestational age was determined to be between 38 to 39 weeks. However, no studies have studied the fetal risk of intrauterine death resulting from remaining undelivered. The authors then set out to find the best gestational age by comparing the risk of fetal death between 34 and 41 weeks gestational age with the corresponding neonatal mortality rate. This is a retrospective cohort analysis of data from the National Center for Health Statistics for 2003 to 2005 in the United States, looking at birth rate and infant death rate. Exclusion criteria included the following. Missing variables multiple gestations, fetal anomalies, gestational age less than 34 and greater than 42 completed weeks, and implausible birth weight. The final population is stratified into high-risk and low-risk cohorts, with high-risk being determined by pre-existing maternal conditions as listed. Pregnancies without any of the mentioned conditions were considered low-risk. The classification does not include pregnancy-related complications such as gestational diabetes, abruption, and or preeclampsia. The high-risk and low-risk populations are pretty homogeneous and similar. Some differences to note are the high-risk group was older with a tendency for pre-existing maternal conditions appearing and a higher rate of C-section. This equation was used to calculate the number of fetal death that could be avoided by delivery for a particular gestational age. We will now look at the results of the analysis carried out. For the entire study population, as the number of completed weeks gestation increased, the fetal death risk for those remaining undelivered decreased until 40 weeks. After 40 weeks, the FDRRE started increasing. Thus, as gestational age advances, the number of stillbirths that could be avoided by delivery decreased until 40 completed weeks, and beyond 40 weeks, there was increasing numbers of accumulated fetal deaths. The authors plotted the fetal death rates due to non-delivery in blue with the neonatal death rates in yellow. The best gestational age for delivery is deemed to be the point when the risks of fetal and neonatal deaths are equal. This is between 37 and 38 weeks in both the general population and in the low-risk pregnancy group. As for the high-risk pregnancy group, the best gestational age for delivery was deemed to be between 35 and 36 weeks using the same analysis. It is arguable why the best gestational age is not when both rates are the lowest but when they equalize. The results are as summarized here. To further illustrate this point, the total number of fetal deaths that could have been avoided by delivery of all subjects was compared with an estimated total number of neonatal deaths that would have occurred at each gestational age. We could see that the numbers of both are about equal at 37 weeks, which is similar to previous results shown. Since there were still neonatal deaths at and after term, the authors deemed that there were causes of neonatal deaths that were independent of prematurity. This arbitrary number was then deducted from all neonatal death numbers at the different gestational ages. When plotted with the fetal death numbers, the best gestational age for delivery at which both death rates are equal is at 36 weeks. With the methods and results in mind, we will now discuss our critiques on this article. Firstly, the only outcomes measured were the mortality rates without taking into consideration neonatal morbidities such as respiratory distress, which would require oxygen support, and also longer hospital stays. This would affect the decision on when the best gestational age for delivery should be. Another factor that affects the accuracy of the gestational age itself is the dating methods used to determine the gestational ages. 
the accuracy of using Nagel's rule and ultrasound differ. The trimester at which ultrasound dating is conducted would also affect the accuracy of the gestational age. Being unable to control for these variables makes analysis incomplete and results might potentially be affected by this factor. The criteria used to stratify the pregnancies into high and low risk were also imperfect. High risk pregnancies were only selected based on pre-existing maternal conditions without taking into consideration pregnancy-related conditions such as preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and others. Maternal risk factors that alter pregnancy outcomes and fetal health such as obesity, smoking, alcohol consumption were not taken into account. Another questionable method is what the authors termed as inherent risk of neonatal death that is independent of prematurity. This is what was used to generate figure 3b, but there was not much information on how this was derived or much elaboration on what these risks might be. The next point that needs clarification is the exclusion criteria of implausible birth weight. The definition is unclear since it is not clear if low birth weights have been excluded and how low or how a birth weight is considered implausible. Risks associated with such birth weights are potentially confounding factors. Lastly, taking a more global view, the data generated is based on the American community and the American healthcare system. Healthcare facilities in developed countries would more likely be able to deal with complicated pregnancies and problems associated with prematurity, but the same cannot be said of those in less developed countries. Furthermore, Less developed countries might face other factors that affect fetal and neonatal survivability, such as the ability to deal with premature infants, accessibility of healthcare facilities, and other indicators of high risk pregnancies, such as malnourishment, starvation, or endemic infections. Thank you, and we hope you have learned about factors that could affect the best in gestational age. Quiz time. Question 1. What is the study design adopted in this paper? Question 2. In low-risk population, which gestational age is deemed the best for delivery? Question 3. Which of the following is not an area of improvement for the study? <laughs>